Good morning, everybody, and welcome back after bank holiday weekend. So I hope you had a lovely time despite the downpour. Um, and of course, typically today we have glorious sunshine. Um, but that's the UK for a bank holiday. So today's talk, we are looking at decluttering. And when I first came across this concept initially, you think, well, what's decluttering got to do with my business? And how is that going to really help me make more money, get more students or clients? Um, but it's something I've been doing for a few years. And I have to say, it really works. Um, and I think Fundamentally, in a nutshell, it's about shifting energy. So, you know, very often or periodically, we might have times where we just feel a bit stuck. Um, you know, we're working hard, we're doing all the things, but maybe not making progress um, or finding the solutions, or we're stuck in the same cycles of you know, things kind of half working, but, you know, the same problems keep coming up and just kind of not finding solutions, not finding inspiration, not finding a different way of doing things and can just feel a bit stuck. Or maybe it's about the classes themselves. You know, if you've been teaching for a long time, then sometimes we can just feel a bit stuck in the same way of doing things, same way of teaching our classes, um, maybe needing some inspiration for lesson content. Again, there can be a, a, a feeling of being a bit stuck or a bit stagnant. And so when we get into those sorts of situations, which is normal, it's just part of the cycles that we go through. We need something that's going to help shift that energy, help shift our mindset. Um, and what I found actually is decluttering really works and it's super helpful in lots of ways in life. And when we think about, um, say, our teaching space, if you, if you imagine your ideal yoga studio, our ideal yoga studio is likely to not have much in it. You know, we want that clear, open space, everything nice and tidy. We've got our yoga equipment, maybe a little bit of decoration, your statue or some crystals, maybe a singing bowl. There's a few little things. But largely what we're looking for is that clear open space where you can roll out your mat and have the experience of your yoga practice without stuff getting in the way, tripping over things, which is obviously a health hazard, um, without too many distractions for your mind, your attention. So it's easy to keep clean. So we sort of have that idea for our yoga studio um, or for a meditation space. Um, you know, and when we look at the traditional books as well, they will describe these spaces as needing to be clean and clear. So enough comfort, but not too much stuff because it's distracting. It ties up your mind. It gets in the way. And this, I think we can expand into our lives at large. Um, you know, and it would just came to mind as well that a friend of mine was um, a chef for many years and they have a thing called mise en place. And it, it literally means to put in place, but it is this idea that everything has its right place. So when you're in the middle of working that you can put your hand to whatever you need because everything's in the right place. Um, and so there's a combination there of when we declutter and get organized, that somehow work flows a lot better. And there's, there's so many benefits that I found in, in having a good declutter. I think partly it is a physical activity. And so 
there's a shift of energy in the way that we're moving. Um, you know, if we're sat at a desk kind of going, oh, don't know how to solve this problem, don't know what to do. If we're physically moving, that can help shift the energy in our bodies. And sometimes I find as much as I do have my regular yoga practice, that if I'm in that mindset where I feel stuck with my yoga business, sometimes doing an actual yoga practice feels too much like work and it doesn't always get me out of that headspace. So a different kind of physical activity can sometimes be useful. Um, so there's that physical side of actually going through some stuff and moving and it's very visual as well. Um, but the first part of it is that it can really help you take stock of what you have. So when you're going through, so for example, a um, few weeks ago, I decided, I noticed my wardrobe was feeling quite rammed and I thought, I'll go through my dresses. I thought I'm not gonna do all my clothes, but I'll go through my dresses um, because I know there's some I haven't worn for a while. And you know how you can buy something for a special occasion and then you don't wear it again for years. So I thought I'm just gonna go through all of them. So I had quite a fun evening trying them all on, seeing what fits, see what I still like working out what I'm going to keep. I found things I've forgotten I had because it was right at the back. And so there's this thing of actually reminding yourself of what you have. Um, and this can be really useful when you're going through maybe work related things and going through some paperwork. It might remind you of some ideas that you sketch down and it's at the bottom of a pile of paper. Um, so there's that stock take of reminding yourself of what you have, um, because often, you know, we are blessed these days with with abundance, with stuff. Um, and we generally have a problem of too much stuff rather than not enough on the whole. Um, so reminding yourself what you have partly for inspiration, partly for the joy, but also for the gratitude. So that can start shifting that sense of um, maybe things not working or not being successful or not having enough. You go, well, hang on a minute, I've got all of these things. Um, so that's part of it. And there's a really helpful process in then discerning what to keep and what to move on. So it can help you feel really grateful and really can reconnect with the things that you love, the things that have meaning for you, the things that you resonate with. And it can also help you let go of things that don't serve you anymore. And it's not that there's anything wrong with those things or that it was a bad idea in the first place, there's no judgment around there. It was probably the perfect thing at the time that you had it. Um, but maybe it's just not the right thing for you anymore. And so you can kind of bless it and let it move on. Um, and there's something I think that happens on a subconscious level there as well about maybe our ideas and our thought patterns. And that if we get used to the idea of physically enacting, keeping what's valuable and taking that moment to go, how does this make me feel? Do I really still connect with this item? And if not, then you can let that move on. And it can be the same with, with our ideas, with our habits. Um, but there's something about the way that it's easier to start with dealing with physical items rather than really trying to shift ideas and thoughts. And that when we're in the habit of periodically decluttering or when we feel that stuckness, it's like, oh, okay, it's time to declutter then it can also start to filter down the other layers of our body or the layers of our being that we can start to shift other things um, that we can help to let go of. Um, and I really love 
Marie Kondo, I have to say. I know it's probably a bit of a cliche these days, but I do like to think I was an early adopter. I came across her book, gosh, 12, 15 years ago, like quite some time ago. Um, and it did really change things for me in terms of being able to stop being such a hoarder and a just in case person and look at look at things in a different way. Um, but rather than focusing on what we let go of, it's more discerning what are the things that you want to keep. Um, and so having around you only the things that are useful and that you love, you know, and her phrase is to spark joy. And I know not everybody loves that because they might say, oh, how does an anorak spark joy? Um, but for me, it did because it connected me with all the outdoor activities that I love, like having good waterproofs enables you to enjoy the outdoors in whatever the weather. Um, and I've had some fantastic trips I can remember with my walking buddy in complete downpour in the Cotswolds, but we still had a great time because we were still dry. Um, so it's, yeah, it's those things so that eventually you only have around you what's useful and, you know, things that you love, things that, that lift your spirit. Um, and so you don't have the things around you that make you feel guilty, that drag you down, that you don't need, that you don't know what to do with, that go, oh God, I still haven't done that thing. Um, you know, the stuff around you is almost like a physical to-do list. So there's something very freeing about shifting all of those things. Now, if you're not used to decluttering, um, just a few ideas maybe to get the ball rolling. Um, I think don't try and do everything. It's the number one thing. Don't try and think, right, I'm going to declutter my entire life because it's a hugely overwhelming and you'll probably get stuck again. Um, so choose one or two areas of like, for example, I said a few weeks ago, I'm just going to go through my, my dresses. Um, and that took a bit of time because I wanted to try things on just to be sure what I like, what I don't like deciding what things go to the charity shop. Got a couple of really nice things that I think I'll try and sell. And again, that was the thing in terms of you know, in terms of life in general, we think of our business as the only way perhaps that we have income and maybe there's other ways that we can make money. And it's that sort of thing that it just can spark ideas and inspiration um, and free up um, some energy to look at things in a new way. Um, so just choose one thing. Um, so I have a few ideas down here, but you may at home know that maybe there's a problem area or there's something that's niggling you or something that you want to clear or something that you know would be not too emotional and easy to go through. Um, so you might want to start if you have any kind of desk at home. I know a lot of people work on their dining table, but you probably have a corner somewhere at home where all your work stuff is. Um, you know, I still have an in tray because I'm old school like that, but just somewhere where I put all my bits of paper. Um, so decluttering your workspace in the same way that we would want our yoga studio or a practice space to be decluttered, you know, the place where you sit with your laptop, computer, whatever it is, your notebooks. I'm, again, going through all of that. Again, it's that stock take. You might find some really interesting ideas that you wrote down, like themes for classes, ideas for development. Um, I have that quite often where like I've half written something and with the intention of going back to finish it and say, oh, I'd forgotten I'd sketched out this blog post or I 
you know, I'd sketched out an idea for an ebook, but I haven't finished it. Um, so things like that can be really useful is go through your desk, um, go through all your paperwork, maybe have a flick through some of your notebooks and see whether ideas, plans, things that you've not finished. Maybe there are some things that you need needed to follow up on that you haven't. Um, so going through some of those things can be really useful. And then maybe going through some of your files and archiving stuff that you don't need anymore, like old accountancy stuff we have to keep for seven years. Um, but they doesn't have to necessarily be right in your workspace. You can archive things and put them in the loft, in the shed, somewhere else. Um, so it clears your space. Um, and there's something really nice. Like I love stationery and there's something so nice about a new notepad and that clean, fresh paper and it's again, it's like that studio space, having that clear space to work in that suddenly there feels like there's space for ideas rather than everything piling on top of you. So that might be one place that you want to start. And it's really satisfying to go through, say, a filing cabinet or paperwork and clearing out stuff that's really out of date that you don't need, shredding it all, putting it in the recycling or in the compost or wherever you might put your dead bits of paper. And then suddenly you've got a bit more space on your shelf, maybe a bit more space in a filing cabinet. You've got room to breathe. You can find what you need. Things flow a bit easier when you've got a bit more space. And again, if you imagine trying to have your yoga practice in a really tight, cramped space, you're not going to necessarily be able to do the practice in the way that you want or allow your body to really extend. And you want the same thing with your workspace as well, that you've got space for your mind to expand, for you to physically maybe lay bits of paper out so you can see your ideas. Um, to have a notepad that's easy to grab, you know, that you've got things that are a little bit more organized and that not everything is difficult. Um, you know, one of my pet hates is when you have to move something to get something else. You know, there's just like these obstacles that you can't take a book off the shelf because you've got to move all the other bits of clutter before. And so, you know, creating all these obstacles physically does make us feel a bit stuck and it makes everything a bit more difficult. So we want to look at how can you make life easy for yourself? Um, something else that you might like to go through from time to time might be, say, all your magazines, publications, yoga books, um, you know, sometimes we might be gifted things, we might pick things up in charity shop that looks great that you mean to read and, you know, five years later you still haven't. Um, you know, there might be times where you want to downsize some of your paperwork, again, because it gives you a bit more space for something new to come in. Um, you know, if you do have books on your shelf that you haven't opened in years you might want to reflect on why that is and maybe it's because you've kind of forgotten about it so do you need to take one out and leave it on your bedside table or a coffee table as a prompt for you to refer to it and use it or was it something that you got and you started reading and then you know, you didn't really get into it and you meant to go back to it. Maybe this is something that you could give to another yoga teacher who might use it. I did a few years ago go through all my yoga books, natural health books, and there were some that were beautiful. And I sort of felt guilty about putting into a charity shop because a, they were quite expensive. I felt bad that I hadn't got round to reading it. I remember I had this huge book on Tibetan medicine. It was very interesting and beautiful. 
but the reality was it wasn't directly related to my work and I just didn't really have the time because there was always something a bit more important. So I gave it to a friend of mine, um, who's a homeopath and a herbalist, and she loved it. And there was just a real joy in gifting things to other people in a very selective way. Um, and it freed up space for me. So it was this really lovely win-win situation. So that might be something that you want to, to go through. Um, I've mentioned already about clothes. Um, again, don't try and do everything, but you might just want to go through all your yoga clothes and think, what do you love? What do you use? Are there things that you know, maybe don't fit as well as they used to or getting a bit tatty or you don't like the style anymore because it's something you've had for 20 years and you think, oh, that's not really me. Maybe you can give it to someone else. Maybe you can move it onto a charity shop. Maybe you could sell it online. Um, you know, letting go of things that you're not really using and loving and letting those things have life elsewhere. And the other thing... Again, it's less of a physical activity, but still I think is a very useful thing to do in terms of freeing up functional space is a digital declutter. Um, so this is something that I need to do on my phone because I keep getting messages saying my storage is nearly full. Um, and again, and I'm noticing how it's affecting the functioning of my phone. Um, and so it is something periodically that I back up a lot of my videos and images on hard drive um, and going through and just deleting stuff like deleting apps that I don't use, um, deleting old messages, deleting lots of photos that, you know, maybe we take 10 photos and one of them's good. So it's like delete the other nine. Um, so again, it's reminding ourselves of what we have because in going through those things, say on your phone or on your laptop, going through files. And again, this is where I have found work that I've forgotten that I've done um, or might find old blog posts or old newsletters that I've written that still have really good content. And you think, well, I can repurpose that. And that again, it it might give you inspiration because it could be some ideas that you'd forgotten you had. And I think, you know, the longer we're in practice, it's like I can't remember every lesson I've ever taught, everything I've ever written for the last 20 years or so that I've been in practice. And so sometimes going through your archives, going through all the files on your laptop partly to get more organized, partly to delete the stuff that is just completely irrelevant and you don't need anymore. Um, but also you may find little nuggets of gold in there as well that you can repurpose um, or that gives you inspiration um, for something new to develop your business now. Um, but again, it's that thing of being able to find what you need quickly and easily and to have your devices functioning quickly. Um, you know, the more cluttered our devices are, the more memory it's taking, it tends to slow down, it's more likely to glitch, it's more likely to crash. Um, you, you might even be stopped from doing something altogether because, they, oh, there's not enough space to download this thing or to save this file. And so it starts affecting the way that you work. So this can work in lots of different ways. Um, so by clearing stuff out, we can shift energy within ourselves. Um, we can get more organized. Um, we can take stock of what we have. We can start to let go of the things that we don't need. And we can free up this kind of breathing and moving space in our home environment, in our work environment, you know, in our virtual environment. And by having space, there's energy then, 
you know, they say nature abhors a vacuum. I think when we start creating space, there's room for things to flow in. And I think when our lives, where everything is rammed to the rafters and everything is like at full capacity, they're just energetically, there isn't space for anything new to come in. And if things aren't flowing, then that's going to be reflected in our business too. And there's something about that that act of faith in the universe to provide that when you let things go, that we're not desperately grasping everything because maybe underneath that is the idea of if I let this go, I'm not going to get anything else. Like I have to hang on to what I've got. That when we let things flow, we allow other things to flow in. You know, if we think of our, our lives like a river, and, you know, the same is true of students, of clients. Sometimes it's the right time for them to move on to something else. And we need to not feel bad about that, that they too are having their growth and development and they might need to move on to something different. But in, in feeling okay with with someone maybe coming in trying something and your class isn't the right fit and they move on it's like we don't want to hang on to people that aren't a good fit for us it's like with grace let them find their path we've created space for for someone who resonates better with the way that we teach um so this can be true in so many different areas of life um but it can just be a very simple, easy thing to do that those times where we're feeling really stuck, things aren't progressing, things aren't going the way we want, we've got the same problems keep coming up, or you're looking for inspiration, or you're looking for a new way of doing things, is just do a little bit of decluttering and it feels bizarre at the time like how does clearing out my shoes help my business but hopefully this has given you a little bit of perspective of on an energetic level and through the different layers of our being that when we start to clear out and create space then surprising things can turn up um and we can have some clarity about our vision, what we're looking for long term, and what we're really, what our goals are. Um, then if we're holding that in mind as we're decluttering, and again, this can be part of the process in the deciding what to keep and what not to keep, particularly if you're decluttering worky stuff with sort of paperwork, books, um, is, is this in line with my vision or not? You know, even if it's something wonderful, like my Tibetan medicine book, beautiful artwork in there, but actually that wasn't what I was practicing. I was just kind of curious. And thought, well, if I put time and energy into that, it's actually taking me off my path. And so I was then happy to let it go to someone who was much more aligned with that. So again, we get clarity over, over what our vision is. We put that out into the universe. We make some space for things to come in. And then pretty much always when I do a decent declutter, something unexpected happens. Like I get an email or a phone call and they say, hey, I saw you online. Would you like to collaborate? Or I might just get a new booking. Like something always happens when I do a declutter. And I feel so much better. And it feels so nice to be in a space that really works and you don't have those annoying things where everything becomes difficult because there's too much stuff. Um, so there's there's the immediate benefit in just, it makes your life a bit easier. You can feel good about it if you're 
gifting things to other people. You can feel good about it if you've got things to sell and maybe you bring some income in and you're creating that space for new things to come in. Um, you know, and I chose this for now because spring is traditionally a time we talk about a spring clean. Um, so certainly, you know, with hopefully some better weather, you know, we can open up the doors and windows, we can get everything out of the cupboard, sort things out, clear everything out and just have this really nice, clean, effective space where everything that we have is either functional and useful or beautiful or that we love that makes us smile and we let go of all the stuff that just makes us feel heavy. Um, so I hope that's given a little bit of inspiration. Um, if you've had any aha moments or you feel inspired to do something, um, I'd love to hear in the comments below if, um, yeah, especially if you do a declutter and then something interesting happens, I'd love to hear those stories too. Um, so I'm going to wish you a very lovely rest of the week and we shall be back here same time next week. So take care. Bye-bye.